An estimated 40% of Americans are descended from immigrants that passed through Ellis Island. That's a lot of Americans. The first Ellis Island immigration station opened on January 1, 1892 in New York Harbor to manage the increasing number of migrants coming to America. In that first year, a record number of nearly 450,000 people passed through to enter the United States. By the time Ellis Island closed in 1954, that number had reached 12 million, although most of those people arrived by 1924. Migrants fleeing poverty and persecution or just looking to start a new life traveled by private steamship from Eastern and Southern Europe. Voyages could take one to two weeks. Ships divided passengers by wealth and class. First and second class passengers slept in staterooms and cabins while everyone else stayed in a space at the bottom of the ship called steerage. Steerage passengers paid around $30 per ticket, but steamship companies would sell as many tickets as they could. First and second class passengers paid even more. Because of this, steerage was often overcrowded and unsanitary, with shared sleeping compartments and no privacy. But hopeful immigrants stuck it out, believing it would be worth it for a chance to live in the United States. When ships finally arrived in New York Harbor, health officers boarded and looked for signs of disease before anyone was allowed to disembark. Healthy first and second class passengers were processed on the spot and allowed to enter the United States without setting foot on Ellis Island. Everyone else waited, sometimes for days, for small ferries to take them to the immigration station for processing. Migrants walked down the gangplank with all of their belongings and dropped their bags in the baggage room on the ground floor. They then continued up a winding staircase to the registry room, which was upstairs for a reason. Doctors stood on the second floor and watched each person climb the stairs for signs of health problems. The registry room, nearly 20,000 square feet with 56-foot-tall vaulted ceilings, was nicknamed the Great Hall for its size. It was here that most migrants' fate would be decided. The first step to entry was a six-second physical exam by a uniformed doctor. Anyone considered a risk to public health was marked with a piece of chalk and taken out of the line to be examined further. Marks were given for everything from signs of mental illness to trachoma, a contagious eye infection that could eventually blind up to three-quarters of those infected. Those who cleared the medical exam went on to a legal inspection. Passengers were checked against a manifest from the ship they arrived on and asked 29 identifying questions, often with the help of an interpreter. If their answers didn't match the information on the manifest, things like their name, occupation, and country of origin, they could be detained. The legal interviews could take as little as two minutes, and the vast majority of people passed through with ease and were allowed to enter the country after being issued landing cards with their name, often misspelled, and destination. For others, the stay on Ellis Island was considerably longer. The few who were detained for either medical or legal reasons could be on the island overnight or for months. Once their records were finally reviewed, they would either be admitted to the U.S. or sent back to the country they came from free of charge. But only 2% of the 12 million immigrants processed at Ellis Island were deported in this way. After inspection, everyone continued down a staircase with three aisles. Those being detained walked down the center aisle, those entering New York City or headed north walked down the left, and those traveling west or south walked down the right. At the bottom was a post office, a rail ticket office, and a place to change money. For some, family waiting to greet them, and for all, a new life in America.